Hello, in this session we're going to be unboxing a Suprema Biostation A2. This is uh, the top of the range fingerprint biometric device that we do. Um, it has a number of uh, excellent features. Uh, it can actually store up to 100,000 uh, users with finger only and up to 500,000 users with a combination of pin plus finger. Uh, it can support both Ethernet and Wi-Fi. Uh, it's, and it can also uh, deal with a number of different RFID format uh, options. So let's start by getting it out of the box. Okay. So like all Suprema clocking terminals, it has a metal backplate and the metal backplate is used to secure the device onto the wall or onto a flat surface. So there's the backplate there. It has a single little grub screw at the bottom and that would get attached to the wall. The biostation here to hooks in uh, to the back and then we screw it up from underneath. Okay. So also at the back, uh, while we're here, we can see it has a large number of different, very small little connectors at the back. And in the, going back into the box, we've got a packet of mail connectors for connecting those up. And what these connectors are for, are for various things. Um, we've got uh, two relays within the device, so we can use those relays to control the door or to control the turnstile or a gate or something like that. Um, we've got uh, two input um, uh, connectors, so we can use those for uh, an exit button or a sensor. And there are a number of other different input and output connectors on there, um, but those are beyond the scope of this session. So. Uh, the only ones that we're going to be interested in this session are network and it uses a standard RJ45 connector such as that one there. So uh, if I just plug that into the back, that's it in there. And then uh, in terms of power, uh, it, uses, it can use PoE, power over Ethernet. So if you happen to have power over Ethernet available uh, when you're doing your installation, that is the most ideal way of powering it up. It means you don't have to put a, a fit a, a separate fuse spur or a separate power socket. Uh, we can just use advantage, take the advantage of your power over Ethernet and uh, power it up using that. Uh, however, not everyone has that luxury. So um, if you don't have power over Ethernet, then we can power it up using a separate 12 volt DC supply. Um, the A2 will actually uh, be, can be powered from a range between 9 volts and 18 volts, but 12 volts tends to be the norm. So if we look at our packet of connectors, uh, the one that we're interested in is this uh, two two-way connector, red and black. So that's your your power connector. Uh, now the other end of that connector, we've got a very odd-looking uh, little connector block here. Now that's used for a power supply which isn't readily available in the UK. So what we tend to do is to snip that one off and we would wire the bare wires into a chocolate block, terminal connector block, or sometimes we solder it onto a barrel connector. So I've got one over here which I've prepared earlier. So here is uh, the same connector wired into a 2.1 uh, barrel socket and then we can use that um, to connect up with a, uh, a power supply, um, power transport transformer. So that could be a plug top transformer or an inline transformer. And then we're going to plug that directly into, into the back. You can they only go in one way around, so it should hopefully it won't go too far wrong. Okay, so that's uh, got the power applied. So we're going to wait for that to start booting up, which it's doing so now. It takes about 40 seconds or so for it to boot up. So um, as it's booting up, we can see it's got a really large, uh, very nice uh, touchscreen um, display. Uh, it's a five inch touchscreen display. Um, it's uh, got Gorilla Glass uh, covering the front, so it's, it's quite robust. Um, and when, when we actually get it booted up, um, when we get into the menu, you'll be able to see how nice that display actually is, how well the menus are put together. 
That's our usual jingle. So if I was just to go into the menu briefly, we can see some of the menu options we've got here. Um, we can see uh, how we can sort of scroll up and down, just like using a mobile phone. So it's a nice modern looking feel. Now, um, one extra thing that we've we've done um, at Egress Systems is commission some new firmware um, for the back for the by Station A2 to try to take advantage of this excellent screen. So what that firmware does is it provides functionality where uh, you can have a scrollable list where a user can select from the scrollable list of a job or an activity or a cost center that they want to clock on to. So you don't just have to clock in and out to start and end your shift. You could also uh, clock on to a particular task uh, at the same, uh, instead or at the same time. Um, so we feel that that extra functionality is, is really drawing out some of the benefits of the uh, Biostation Air 2 um, and uh, is, is a you know, really powerful feature. Uh, now, the A2 is not uh, IP rated, unfortunately. If you need an IP rated device, then uh, I suggest that you look at the BioStation 2 or the BioLite Net 2, for example. They would be good options in that scenario. Uh, the device does actually have a uh, video entry uh, system, a video phone system as part of it, which is quite unusual. Uh, and that would work over a... Um, uh, a SIP based VoIP server setup. Um, it's not something we, we do very often, but uh, it, it has got that facility should that be needed. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this session. Uh, we're going to have some future sessions where we're going to be looking at setting up the menu options and uh, setting up uh, the enrolment of users and administrators. Thank you very much.